Hello Year 5, welcome to your final maths lesson of the term where we're going to just be recapping everything we've done in terms of adding and subtracting fractions. Um, so hopefully lots of opportunities to revisit anything you found tricky. Um, get you started, we've got a little arithmetic starter here. Remember what perimeter is, we did that earlier on. And think about how you could simplify this fraction into quarters. Have a go, pause me and then I'll reveal the answers. Right, so number one, hopefully you divide it by three to turn it into three quarters. With 86 divided by five, 17 remainder one, hopefully you went, oh, well, it doesn't end in a five or a zero, therefore I know there's going to be a remainder. Perimeter is the distance around the outside, which would have been 44 millimetres in total. And then the add in there, I would have probably done it in a column method myself, but however works best for you. Okay, so a little warm up. I'm not going to do this one for you. This is just to get that brain going. Can you have a go at um, solving these questions, please? Thinking about what you do if the denominator is the same um, and what a whole would be equivalent to in fractions. <clears throat> have a go and then I'll show the answers. OK, so for this one, my denominator would be the same, which would be 10. I do three, add three, six, add the one, seven tenths would be the answer. I can't simplify that because seven and 10 aren't both in the same times table. Um, this one, five eighths add something eighths equals one. Well, I'd go, well, I know that one is the same as eight eighths. So I know that that's the same. So five add what would be eight eighths? Five add three eighths would be that. And again, the same for this one. I'd go one is the same as five fifths a whole is always when the numerator and the denominator is the same so five fifths take away something is going to be equal three fifths five take away two would equal three fifths okay so important recap there of the fact that a whole is always when the denominator and the numerator are the same okay right this one here then two thirds at five sixths again i'd really like it if you could have a go at this one without me Give it a go on your own, recap what those steps are that we use, and then you can pause me, come back, um, and we can have a go together. It does say here, give your answer as a mixed number. That's a bit of a clue that you might end up with an improper fraction that you need to turn into a mixed number. Okay, so pause me here, then I'll get my steps up and we can have a look at the answer together. Okie dokie, so I've got my steps up here. Let's see if they match yours. First thing I need to do, I've got different denominators, so I find the lowest common denominator. I know straight away, actually, that six is in both of those times tables, but I will just prove that. So we're good to go from there. Okay, so now I need to convert them so they've both got six as their denominator. One already has that, but let's change two thirds. So to turn two thirds into six, I can multiply by two. I do the same to the bottom as the top. So two times two is going to equal four. So two thirds is the same as four sixths. Step three, I'm going to add. So I'm going to add my now converted fraction. So instead of two thirds, four sixths, add five sixths. And that's really nice and simple for me because all I need to do is add the numerators. The denominator stays the same. So that's going to equal nine sixths. Right now, final step is to simplify or convert to mix. To begin with, I'm going to convert it to a mixed number. So I'm going to go right nine sixths. My question when I'm converting is how many groups of six can I make out of nine? Well, I can make one group of six and then I'm going to have three left over, which becomes my numerator denominator stays the same and then three six can that be simplified is three r three and six both in the same times tables actually yes they're both in the three times tables so i can divide both of those by three and i'll get three divided by three is one six divided by three is two so my final answer as a mixed number is one and three sixths or in its simplest version one and a half okay nice and simple there remember these steps are there to help you right word problem here again i'm going to pause i'm going to read it to you ask you to have a go pause me and then come back and we'll have a look together so julia eats two fifths of a pizza 
Maria eats four fifteenths of a pizza. How much pizza do they eat all together? Keyword for you there. And then a second part of the question is what fraction of the pizza is left? Well, we've done the first step together. That's reading it. Can you now go through, underline and choose how you might solve that? Again, really good. If you have a go, pause me here and then come back and I will do a word example. OK, OK, so welcome back. I have highlighted my important information. You could have underlined it. Uh, so I highlighted the numbers and the word all together and then also the word left. And I can see this is a multi step problem is in there are more than there's more than one thing I need to do before I can answer it. So first thing I chose what I needed to do the first bit to find out how much pizza do they eat all together. All together was my keyword. It tells me I need to add to find out what the total of what they ate was. So I've got two fifths at four fifteenths there. However, I know I can't add those if they've got different denominators. So I'm going to change my two fifths into my fifteens. I know uh, that 15 is in the five and the 15 times tables. So I times the bottom by three to turn fifths into 15. I'm going to do the same Ooh, to the bottom as the top. So that's going to be six fifteenths. OK, next thing I do would be I'd add them using my new converted denominator. So instead of two fifths, I'm doing six fifteenths, add four fifteenths. And that's going to give me. Ten fifteenths. OK, now ten fifteenths. Question is, if it's asking how much pizza do they eat all together, I'm going to assume they want it in the most simplified answer. So can I simplify 10 fifteenths by dividing it? Is there a times table that has got both 10 and 15 in it? Have a think. Yes, of course there is. They're both in the five times tables. So if I divide both the bottom and the top by five, 10 divided by five is two. 15 divided by five is three. So Julia and Maria ate two thirds of the pizza altogether. That's step one. Step two, what fraction of the pizza is left? Normally, if we're asking how much is left of something, what does that normally mean? It normally means subtracting. OK, so we want to think about what did they start with? and What have they got now that they've eaten two thirds of it? Well, they started with a whole pizza, didn't they? So can you remember what we did before? What did we say? Because I'm going to I'm basically saying a whole take away the two thirds they eat. What could I say instead of one whole to make this a bit easier? What? fraction would one whole be equivalent to? Well, if I was thinking about it in thirds, because I'm taking away thirds, a whole is the same as having three thirds, my numerator, and my denominator being the same. So three thirds take away the two thirds they've eaten, super simple, one third. Okay, I think that bit, knowing that these two are the same, is the most useful part of this, guys, because it's much easier to add or subtract when we're just dealing with fractions that have the same denominator. Okay, right. Next one, then, again, I'm not actually going to do this for you. I want you to work out for me. True or false? Pause me here. Use what you know about what you do with the numerator, the denominator, etc. Can you use ape for your answer? So remember, that's going to be I want a I want you to answer. So either true or false for each question. I want you to prove it. Show me a calculation that proves whether their answer is correct or incorrect. And then I want you to explain for me in words if they did make a mistake, what was wrong? If they didn't make a mistake, how do you know? What shows you that? OK, pause me and then have a go, please. OK, so hopefully you've got that both of those were false. For this question, let's call it question number one. The answer is false. The proof is that seven tenths take away two fifths. You would actually need to do seven tenths take away four tenths, convert it to get three tenths as your answer. That would be your proof. And you explain from where I'm standing, it looks like They've taken away the numerators, they've done seven take away two to get five, and then done ten take away five to get um, five on the bottom. Quite a few steps that have gone wrong there. Again, this bottom one would have been false. You needed to add and then take away. I converted into twelfths before I did it, so I got nine twelfths. 
take away this would have been two twelfths would have been seven twelfths is my answer not actually quite sure where this one went wrong okay right i think i've got yeah one final thing to do and actually i'm not going to do this one i'm going to ask you please to have a go at answering this uh thinking about what we did with our last word problem yourself so maria cycles one and three quarters of a kilometer on monday she cycles two and one eighth of a kilometer on tuesday how far does she cycle in total on monday and tuesday if you want to do this completely kind of fresh and on your own with the steps in your head go for it and pause me here if you'd rather have the steps of success on the screen i'm going to show them now and then you can pause me here instead there we go there's your steps of success why don't you have a go at that one for me guys okay so i've shown my work in there i chose to add my whole numbers to get three to convert my fractions and then add those to get seven eighths and then those two together would be three and seven eighths of a kilometre. Remember, if that's something you're still struggling with, get those steps up so that they're in front of you to help you. OK, all that's left for me to say then, guys, is a massive well done for smashing fractions this term. Uh, Ms Rutherford and I agree that this is one of our meatier maths topics and there is still some stuff to go on it. Um, but the fact that you've been doing it at home, um, most of you independently, uh, perhaps with some drop in help has been incredible. We are so proud of you. Well done. OK. For your activities today there is a space shuttle themed worksheet for you which is all to do with kind of equivalent fractions etc solving problems have a look at that there it's on there as is the answers um and then if you've once you've done that that's kind of your fluency there's some problem solving and reasoning as well okay good luck everybody see you soon bye bye